I'm going to be showing you how to use the simple panoramic exporter for Unreal Engine. So, um, the simple panoramic exporter can be purchased in the marketplace. Um, if you have my login, it's down alphabetized for simple panoramic exporter, and you install it to your engine, not to your project. So, I think I already have it installed in my engine, but I'll check, make sure. So, um, there it is. You can find out some more details by actually going to the uh, details here. But there's really not much information, which is why I'm recording this, uh, this uh, demo. So, once it's done, um, I installed a 418. This project is 418. And it should be over here on the side. Um, but I have not enabled yet yet or uh, hasn't finished installing. Let's just check over here. It's done with all the installs. Okay. And let's just see if we can enable it. Go to my plugins. And simple. Let's just restart the project real quick. And then um, once we get everything exported, it'll be a, a, an image sequence. And then uh, I'm gonna show you how to use uh, After Effects and potentially Premiere to then stitch that together um, for uh, for distribution or you know upload it to, to YouTube or whatever you want to do and then uh, if you, this does not record audio and if you want to do audio then I recommend using Premiere if you're just going to do an image sequence without audio After Effects is quicker for me to, to use and uh, another caveat about this is that um, this is an asynchronous render it'll render a frame which will take a few seconds, then render another frame and take a few seconds. Um, it should frame step the engine for a lot of components like particles and moving materials and stuff like that, but it does not uh, keep the media player in lock. So if you have any video content, um, this will not work. Uh, the way to around that would be to either make the video um, into a, a sprite sheet so that it is tied to the engine or um, to mask out, the, you know, the video, like put green screen on it and then composite it in post. Uh, that's because the media player is um, a different engine and it, and, it, and it doesn't get frame stepped by this plugin. Uh, there's an experimental feature in the plugins uh, called image plate. Let's see. That will soon, uh, when it's more... Um, when it's uh, better supported, we'll then uh, have uh, the movies inside of the sequencer, um, and it'll be tied to this. But for right now, uh, this will not work for the panoramic exporter for videos only. Uh, so here's now our movie capture, which is the panoramic exporter, and then I have to enable it, and then it'll restart the engine one more time. Um, if you've ever opened up your project files in a text editor, you'll see that it's just uh, human readable, and uh, now the it's been enabled here. This could be then set to false view. Don't want it. Uh, we want to manually override it this way, or change the engine that you're using. Great. So it's enabled, and now you'll see that there is a panoramic exporter object here now. And this is essentially a camera, and if your scene it just doesn't move at all, then uh, just putting this in at whatever location of your uh, cam scene camera, like here's the player start, uh, player start is at this location, I can copy that, and I'll put it there, and so now this will see what the, what the player start would see. But if you want to move around, you might have to, uh, you might have to use a sequencer then to animate it, and I'll show that right now. So we'll start 
with a level sequencer. And this is going to be called Anorama Sequencer. And I'll just toss in the camera. There we go. And then we can add a transform track. And the, the transform we're going to be using is um, location. I do believe it has uh, another caveat is that you cannot rotate this camera. Uh, that's just the nature of how the cube map exporter works for Unreal. So uh, that's something that may be done in post if you want to do a pan and scan in uh, Premiere or something. So we'll start here. With the keyframe and then this is 150 frames so that's five seconds and five seconds later will be over here and don't want to get fancy there we go now we're being fancy cool and then we just want to have something to look at so that we can verify. So there's a cube over here hanging out and a sphere over here hanging out. Super fancy. And um, if I hit normal play, uh, this won't do anything just yet. But let's go ahead and select this panoramic exporter. Oh, actually, let's go. Let's finish the sequencer. The sequencer, all I have to do is just make sure that it auto starts. So we hit play, it'll automatically. Uh, do the, the five seconds and then it'll return to wherever the player start is. Um, so that's components done. Now let's go back to the exporter and here you go. Here are the settings. This could be whatever you want to call it. We we'll call it test for right now. And what it will do is it will append uh, the shot number to the end. The only export format that I thought looked good was HDR. Um, I've tried all of them. Uh, PNG looks awful. Um, so uh, do, do that. And then um, the other settings are, if you want to just let it go, you keep it at uh, frames capture at zero. Um, but if you know how many frames you're, you're doing, which in our case, we're doing 150, we could say 150 here. And uh, when it knows how many, how many frames you're going to do, you can actually say quit on finish. And that will um, stop it for you. Otherwise, if you put zero, it'll just go. And definitely, and you have to actually hit the stop button to stop it from doing its render. Uh, these can get fairly large, so you know if you do overnight, and leave it on accident, and it could uh, fill up your hard drive. Uh, Thirty is by far uh, is the default, um, and it's fine sometimes. Though uh, if you're um, if you have you know some graphics, you really want to have a better uh, frame rate. Uh, I have also done sixty, and it just makes it a little more crisp. And then the last setting is capture height, and uh, you know stereoscopic, or sorry, this is monoscopic, uh, monoscopic, uh, uh, equal rectangular uh, images. I think that I'd normally go 2160. Uh, might as well go bigger than you need, and then uh, you can scale it down later on. So this is just the height, and then it will factor in the width automatically based off of this height, All right? So this is uh, quite literally everything you need to do to get started with the plugin. And um, what it's doing is it's overriding the first person. So it's not going to use this. It is This is the camera that's going to be used. Now you don't want to keep this in here when you're playing. If you want to go back to just playing your, your game or seeing your experience because this will continue to always render. So just delete it out when you're done with it. So uh, hit play. And let's see. So you see everything's really cho choppy because it's rendering out these frames one at a time. And this is why like video would be playing back at a normal rate um, and why it would, it would uh, make really uh, glitchy video looking uh, textures if you're using them. I'm gonna go ahead and hit stop because it's also, this is a project I was using for Arduino and it's probably looking for Arduino as well. Let's see that real quick. 
let's take that out just in case that was clogging up everything. Okay. Cool. All right, so let's let's see how far I got. Um, we don't have to have the full 150 right now. So uh, the quick way to find your your content folder is I just right click and say show me in the explorer and it gets a shortcut to getting to my project there it is now if we come up here there's a folder called saved this is like a a junk folder where it um, auto puts your auto saves and if you ever crash your project you can open again you can like recover stuff from in here often I delete this folder before I send a project to somebody else and now we have a folder called panoramas and the panoramas I call it test and it looks like we got 21 frames that's enough for us to to do the next step so I'm just going to open up After Effects and click there and bring on this image sequence saved panoramas test and just select the first one and it'll just bring in the as a, as a as footage boom 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 let's create a composition there we go and cool echo rectangular footage with a slight move a slight camera move less than a, less than a second of footage there we go and uh, do note that as, as I said before we can't really change the rotation uh, this is not centered but it'll be fine inside of uh, the engine so from here, if, if we didn't want to add audio, uh, we could just take this to the media encoder, uh, which would be send to Adobe Media Encoder Q. Might have to open that up. I oh, don't no, open that up. There we go. Okay, we get rid of this previous project and get rid of it. Sure. Um, let's go ahead and load it in again from After Effects. Let's send it over to the media encoder. There it is. I did it twice. It's just. All right. So um, my uh, computer, probably because I use H.264 last, is defaulting to that being the um, encoder. Uh, but now. Uh, in order to support these higher resolution formats, uh, we have there is now an H.265 that we can use, otherwise known as hardware encoding, HEVCA. So uh, the, if you haven't used this before, it might prompt you to install uh, the, uh, uh, the drivers for that, and uh, having a license for Adobe gets you the drivers, uh, uh, includes the drivers in the, in the price of your Adobe subscription. I think that the codec by itself does cost like $25. Um, but by setting there, you can see that it's a 4K image, and the only thing we do want to do if we're done is just the last button is video is VR, and what this does is it includes metadata that would tell YouTube that it's uh, echo rectangular. Otherwise, if you didn't click this button and you just try to upload it to YouTube, it would just show up like this instead of a spherical uh, video. Now, if you're going to be editing, editing this stuff with other videos, you don't need to do this right now. Just